Well, you can see that we removed the engine. There's the bell housing with the throw out bearing. And we measured the distance across, well, not across the distance, but we put a straight edge across the bell housing and measured the distance of how far this shaft goes beyond that adapter bell housing mating surface. We're going to check that and see, make sure this is lining up with the uh, pilot bushing so forth. Make sure we don't know what the original magic number was because we don't have the you know the original engine. We didn't do this so so we're going to see that this all sits. We're going to take some measurements to make sure that you know the clutch is sitting properly in the spines. This is properly in the throwout bearing and that's the most important part. We don't want anything bottoming out or anything. It, it seemed to fit all right as far as just the way it felt coming loose but uh, and the sounds and so forth so we'll we'll, we'll check all of that um, but I didn't film removing it but I wanted to talk a little bit about the removal we removed it from the bottom you can see we still have transmission fluid leaking and I think I found the source of the leak we'll talk about that later but anyway in order to remove the motor, uh, we went down, you know, we removed it from below because to go out and up, we would have had to remove the component board, the battery box, you know, all of this. So many items that, you know, would need to be addressed. So instead, we disconnected the, the you know, the encoder uh, lines and the three cables, power cables going to the motor. And then we, you know, uh, supported the bell housing uh, using a floor jack. We had this thing down on the floor when we removed it. Um, from the vehicle and so remove this front mount which is just laying here right now and just you know slid it out and down it was tight because that front differential was wanting to interfere with the uh, um, transmission jack that we use it was tight it was tight but we got it out but with the Jeep down on the floor, all four wheels on the floor, we didn't have the clearance to roll it out. So we put it up on uh, the ramps, just the front end here, and allowed us to roll it out. And then once we rolled it out, we put it on the workbench. So let's go to the workbench. So like I said, we're going to do some investigating to see what's going on. You know, it it's not... The most serious issue we have uh, is the balance and my guy that we've always used to do our dynamic balancing is nowhere to be found <laughs> so kind of like everything else uh, at this point in time hard to get things hard to get anybody to do anything so anyway I don't know what his his particular uh, case is, but anyway, we're gonna have to come up with another way to uh, at least, uh, you know, balance this ourselves. Um, we're in an area where we just don't have a lot of services, and so um, I'm gonna see if I can find someone else local. But um, we're also gonna look at uh, perhaps doing this ourselves because. This won't be the one and only. But anyway, that's an issue that needs to be dealt with with this one. It's just out of balance enough that uh, uh, it, it, I, I just, we, we can't leave it this way. We need to balance it. Unfortunately, you know, the motor, um, you know, even though, let me give it a good spin here. Even though the motors spin fairly freely, 
there's enough resistance there that we're not going to get uh, a repeatability. Um, if you have a high point, high point, a heavy spot, you 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 would you know that would naturally go to the bottom, and what happens when you do something like this with a low friction device that this would go just like I spun it go around and then it would slowly come to a stop and then it would go back and then go back and it will come to rest at that heavy point and we make note of that heavy point and then you would do it again and you do it multiple times and you're finding that repeatability, that heavy point. And then what you would do is you would remove some weight from that heavy point and do the whole process over and over. That's the simplest way to do it. It's not you know, the most uh, accurate, but you can get pretty doggone close. And we have uh, borrowing... Um, a hand device before then and, and got uh, close enough where the guy said you know even using the machine it, it, it didn't get it that much closer but it takes uh, time and patience to do that and we may have to resort to that um, if we can't find somebody to do this with professional equipment so anyway that's one of the things I want to do but I also um, want to check and like I said make sure that our alignment longitudinally here is correct because um, we don't know what that magic number is supposed to be and so we've done other Jeeps and um, I could look up the numbers from those I don't know if they're all the same or not but anyway like I said we're at that point where we need to do some investigating on this to see what um, what needs to be done. Well, I thought I'd better share some of this with you before I went too far. <laughs> like, you know, pull the whole motor out before I ca capture anything on camera. So anyway, uh, removed the, um, f you know, clutch and flywheel. And, of course, we have the adapter here and the coupler. I already removed the coupler. I stuck it back on just to show you that what's supposed to be an interference fit isn't really. <laughs> and I already wiped out a bunch of the metal fragments in there. You can see some residue on the end here. But let me, let me zoom in closer, let you see what I saw. So we get the coupler off, and look what we see here. So what this is, is that's the end of the motor chewed up. And that's chewed up because... The end of the coupler was coming in contact with the end of the motor. So I did some uh, checking before I took everything apart and there is enough room to To shim this out. So anyway, we'll have to investigate that further. You know, it, it turns easy. Um, I don't hear any noise. And I'm going to get in there and look closer pull the adapter off. The other thing of note is the 
adapter is the other thing that we noticed is that the uh, set screws, this is the Canadian electric vehicles, adapter coupler, which is obvious by the style and color of the adapter. But anyway, these set screws, the installer did not tighten these down. And they provided a hole for access to the set screws. And not that they do any, any anything really. It's supposed to be an interference fit. But you don't want them coming loose in there. So they needed to be tightened and, and locked tight in place. And they were not. And they were very loose. Uh, when we went to loose them, they, they were already loose. You know, before we were going to pull this. So anyway, look at look at all the metal filings. So that's the access hole, and the reason for that is is the diameter of the hole in the adapter is smaller. You know, so this ID is smaller than the OD on the flange of the coupler. And they probably did that because they're running out of meat. And so they just did what they had to do to keep as much material in place. Um, because you can see it was uh, it gets kind of thin. So, and this is a big big adapter plate. It's a big heavy flywheel. So anyway, that's what we're dealing with. I'll pull this off. We'll do some further inspection and decide what we want to do. We're going to balance coupler, flywheel, clutch, everything all together. Just a record of what, we, what we've seen, what we've come across.